Hello there and welcome to our Spanish stream. This is part three. Um, this will be the, say, the third video that we would have done. And this is entitled A Little Inland. It's actually from a blog that we've done some time ago. So shall we move on? Think in the coast, a concrete jungle, where the infamous and numerous cranes dotted the skyline, telling of more building, was perhaps not for us. We headed in a little inland, not too far. After all, we needed to be able to rent the property to holidaymakers, and they love the beaches. Quickly we found open land, agricultural fields, and the first of the small towns, San Miguel de Salanas. We moved on to Los Montesinos, and then Algorfa. The main issue was that in the towns, as with all Spanish towns, what was within our price range, there were only apartments with tiny balconies and often no pool. So we headed for an urbanisation where we could buy considerably more for our money. Then we could look that we couldn't on the coast and there were, would be more there would be townhouses and communal pools. We were impressed by what we could afford and it was beautifully quiet so we went for a walk around but there was nothing there. We couldn't amble to the shops for fresh bread, milk in the mornings or go for a stroll to a cafe bar. Every time we wanted to do anything other than chat to a neighbour, if you could find one, we had to get in the car. Reality hit. This was not what we wanted. Like it or not, at the heart, we are townies. If, if we were to find our future home, it would have to be where we could walk to shops and, and take an evening stroll, not just under the moon of love, but under the streetlights too. We briefly stopped for a, at, a, at a couple of urbanisations with some amenities, but they all felt so forced, not proper villages, just contrived very much the case of Little Britain. We headed back to the coast to reconsider our options. We found ourselves back on the coast. We figured that if we were going to buy in the concrete jungle, then we wanted to be sure that we were buying the right property in the right location. We held a family brainstorming session to, ex to, ex ex to get the exact requirements. With three teenagers to consider, we thought there may be problems accommodating all our must-haves. But we made the list anyway. We figured, it, we figured that if we managed to fulfill all our buying requirements, then it would suit other families looking to rent for a holiday. 13 year old son must be next to the pool so he could go there independently. He is severely visually impaired and loves to swim. 18 year old son no major roads, preferably none at all, to cross between the house and the nearest bar and the nearest bar and absolutely must be walking distance to the beach. 19 year old daughter good shopping and she doesn't count supermarkets in that. Mum, walk to the supermarket, range of shops, must be local cafes and restaurants, must be able to see youngest son from the pool, from the terrace, plenty of sun and shade, areas to choose from, good size out terrace, good size outside space rather, large enough to accommodate the family, not and not in a position where we can't where we can shake hands with the person living opposite without either either of you having to leave your own property dad within budget so, and so the search begin it was 2006 prices still rising and the building boom was still booming there was talk in, talk that the bubble would burst at some point but everyone was confident that the prices wouldn't fall. Just a slowdown in the rate of new building. Exchange rate was a heady 145 plus euros to the pound. Cafes, bars, restaurants were thriving and the life in the sun was good.
We started looking mainly at two bedroom apartments and townhouses, large enough to accommodate a sofa bed in lounge and for six people to be able to stay comfortably. Armed with a score sheet for each property that we began to search, despite having a very clear criteria, this was our first lesson in a state agency showing us that what what they want to sell rather than what they want to want you to buy. Slowly we we began to convince them to rule out areas and some areas and styles. No mid floor apartments. It had to be either ground floor or a wall with a garden or upper floor with a solarium, a roof terrace, as we wanted more than just a balcony. Although tempting to go further back, as the properties were generally bigger for the same price, we want, wanted within a mile of the beach. Some of the pools were not just out of sight, but over, over a minute's walk away, no good at all. Some just had their alley between you and the opposite neighbour, far too close for comfort. We dismissed property after property after property. We were really leaning towards a townhouse rather than an apartment, but began to wonder if, if within our price range there was a property matching our requirements. At the best scores were hitting 7 out of 10, most considerably less. If the house was good, then the location was wrong or the pool was too far away. If the location and the pool were good, the house was too small. Then one day we hit the jackpot. We actually found not one, but three possibilities. The evening we sat and studied the details, all, th all three again and again. We, list we listed them with preference in order and the following day made an offer on number one, the property that really did score 10 out of 10. It, it, this was it, we were actually about to buy a house in Spain. You know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men. The offer was accepted on our perfect house. We signed the various the various agreements and went to the notary to, to grant the power of attorney for for most of the purchase proceedings, but not for the final day. We wanted to be there ourselves to sign the purchase forms at the notary on completion day, set for 12 weeks time. We paid over 3,000 euros and the date was agreed for the second payment. The vendors were Spanish, a couple who were selling their week weekend holiday home, and his wife was sadly terminally ill. Although very sad for this couple that we had never met, we knew their, their selling the second home would be, in a, would be a relief for them. Feeling up, feeling up much needed funds and making things less complicated for the husband. He signed the forms, but she was taken into hospital with unexpected complications. Without her signature, thing, things couldn't complete, but our solicitor worked with theirs to do as much of the work as possible. They expected the lady to be out soon so she could attend the notary and give the power of attorney to, to her solicitor to sign everything on the behalf of her in the future. Then the phone, then the phone call came. The lady had died. I felt guilty at being so disappointed. After all, losing the house was nothing compared to what this poor man had, had lost. It was just going to be... It wasn't going to be possible to continue with the purchase. So we were back to square one. In the normal course of events, when the buying a property, both seller and the buyer deposit 3,000 euros with the solicitors. Whichever part... Whichever party pulls out or lose, pulls out, loses their deposit. However, as the lady had never signed anything, any, any both, anything both deposits were still held by the solicitor, not paid over. And in the light of the tragic events, it was agreed that the best option was to just option was to just each settle our own solicitor's cost to the date. 
it was a financial blow, but in relatively small one in the grand scheme of things. However, when we returned to Spain for our next house hunt, we felt much wiser, more knowledgeable and more confident about pursuing our dream.